Good evening, good afternoon, everybody, depending on when you're watching this. Listen, I'm so glad that you are joining me on this very, very special conversation I'm having. Uh, I'm really excited and elated if I sound that way, it's because I am, because I'm getting ready to host our fall revival right here in Nashville, Tennessee, at the Impact Church of Nashville. We're going to be hosting our fall revival entitled Restoring the Broken Places. That, that's what God has put in our spirit. We're really excited about what God is going to do out of Isaiah 58 and 12. Listen, it's going to be at 7 p.m. nightly, 705 Rivergate Parkway in Goodlettsville, Tennessee. All right. Make sure you put it on your calendar. I'm going to give you a few more minutes to come on in the room. Listen, you need to share this interview, this conversation. I have one of the stalwart individuals uh, that's going to be speaking at our event. She is uh, Dr. Evangelist Pastor uh, preacher extraordinary, Dr. Ruby Holland. You don't want to miss this conversation. You do not. In fact, you need to share this. You need to let some people know. You need to let them know right now. Get on the phone, share this link, share this post, because we're going to be sharing some things with you that I believe are going to impact you and just give you a little taste of what you can expect during this revival. I'm so honored, Dr. Ruby, Pastor Ruby, to have you here uh, you are an individual who is in demand all over the country. There are a lot of people who couldn't wait for us to come out of quarantine just to get a chance to be in the room with you. And I feel so blessed and privileged that you would come to Nashville and, and to our church and make a deposit into our ministry. And we're looking forward to that. I couldn't wait till next week. I had to talk to you now. <laughs> so thank you for giving me a few minutes to just kind of share with us um, your thoughts and the philosophy about ministry and God and, and, and what you're expecting to happen during this interview. Good to have you, Dr. Ruby. I'm glad you're here. God bless you. It is my delightful pleasure to be here with my friend and brother, Pastor Derek Faison and the Impact Church. Listen, I'm excited about being a part of what God is doing at the Impact Church. You know, uh, Pastor Faison, as I was listening to you, the name of your church is prophetic. It wow. is both prophetic and profound wow. uh, because that's exactly what needs to happen in this season. Yeah. There, there has to be an impact. Yeah. Experiences we, we kind of skim over or live through or, or, or get around, yeah. but yeah. when something is impactful, yeah. it is a, it, it is indelibly, um, in our minds forever. And so I'm excited to be a part, to have been selected and chosen by you and God to share in this fall revival. Listen, I believe that the best is yet to come. God yes. is up to something. And yes. I'm excited that uh, what he's doing in this season, yeah. he, he's not doing it without us. We were included yeah. in the plan, the purpose, and the divine will of God. Yes. Oh, see, see, y'all, don't even get me started. See, y'all already see that God is, is starting something. God is getting ready to do something through this woman of God. You, you, you see the gift, the anointing on her life. Uh, I've been blessed to be able to watch her from afar to follow her ministry. Uh, some time ago, I was preaching at her church several times and, and their church is just amazing. I mean, God's the anointing is there. The worship is there. Such talented, such gifted people. And I was just humbled just to her to let me come and just grace her pulpit. And I'm so happy to finally get an opportunity to have her in our city, in our church. I'm an admirer. I am a fan. Listen, I want to, I want to talk to you about a couple of things, Dr. Ruby, because, you know, you're a pastor. You've been an evangelist for a long, 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 long time. Um, and, and I'm a minister. I'm a pastor now in Nashville. And I know for me, ministering, um, I'm, I'm minister from a, from, a, from a place, right? And what I mean is, like, there's never a time I've got up and spoken a message that didn't come from a place somewhere in me that was exposed to that, broken by that, um, with gain wisdom from that, right? I'm not one of the kind of preachers who just grab a sermon, grab something that sounds right and just ministers. It's, it's from a, a place. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of Sundays ago, one of my attendants was helping me uh, in my office after I got done. And I, I told them that I feel naked, right? I just got finished ministering the word and I felt like I just stripped in front of people, right? Um, because it was so transparent. It was so revealing. Without revealing the details, I revealed enough that you knew that this didn't just come from um, an internet 
message that I heard or a book that I picked up, right? It was from a place. Talk to me a little bit, because I hear the passion when you talk. I hear the passion when you speak. Talk to me about where that passion for ministry comes from for you. Well, Paul said it like this. He says, I am a debtor. Yeah. And, and in other words, I'm indebted to this. When we think of the price that was paid, how Jesus Christ redeemed us from the penalty of sin. Yeah. And when you understand that um, God could have chosen anyone else, there are people that are more qualified, that are more educated, that, uh, that have more money than we do. But yet God saw something in us that he could use and because of that we we understand that god doesn't need us we need him yes. uh, he didn't have to choose us and the fact that he decided to choose us with our inadequacies with our as perfectly imperfect as we are our imperfections our idiosyncrasies our inadequacies yet he decided to use us um, he uses seasons of testing and seasons of drought, seasons uh, that we go through, seasons of suffering. These seasons destroy our pride in yes. our own ability and reinforce our dependency on the sufficiency yes. of our God. Yes. And the only thing I just said is that God doesn't need us. We need him. But we with every experience that we've had in ministry, because there are those who would think that this is a glamorous life and uh, we, we are we are. Um, inhumane or we don't have feelings and we don't have emotions or we we never have a bad day we never have a headache that's right. not so because of the anointing yeah. and, and the grace that's on our life many times when we are before the people they don't see the struggle or no. they don't see they don't no. see the battles the, the yeah. silent battle that's because of the anointing that's on our life but here's what you have to understand pastor uh salvation is free yeah but the anointing costs you something. And yes. whenever, yes. see, yes. the anointing is the only thing yes. that destroys, yes. not break yes. something. Yes. Yes. I, I, I broke the screen on my, uh, on my phone yes. and I took it to a place called You Break, I Fix. If something is broken, you can fix it. But the anointing doesn't break the yoke. It destroys yes. the yes. And when something is destroyed, it's totally, it's totally irreparable. It, yes. it, it's destroyed. It cannot yes. be repaired. And so it, a lot of times it is that anointing and the grace of God that gives us the ability to do what we do. And like you said, when you're completed that assignment, you feel naked because you Very left good. it all on the Very table. Good. Because you understand that it's not about you, but it is it is it, it is all about Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I'm so glad you said that because all through my mind, I'm thinking about uh, it costs, that ministry costs. And that people, when they look at you and they see the, 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 the anointing on you, the gift of God, you, the opportunities that you're walking into, they think you just walk in the room and just get up there and spout some things. And they don't understand that you had to live through something, survive something, that it cost you something personally Absolutely. to be able to do what we do. Um, and we make it look easy. <laughs> if they don't understand the people that like you today don't like you today. <laughs> And, and 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 not only that, the call of God, the 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 anointing of God that's on your life, um, people try to discredit that. Talk and they, that. When, when, that. when when they don't, when they see you, they just think you woke up like this. No, they don't understand the nights you cried, the lonely days, and and all that you had to suffer through yeah, yeah. to yeah, just yeah. carry the weight of God's anointing. Now there's glory, and then there is. The weight of glory yeah, and yeah, and it is yeah. that weight of glory uh that that says to me that hey um you were lonely you yes. you were ostracized yes. you you had you've been broken in some places yes. that yes. you may not be even be yes. healed yet that yes. you have to deal with your unhealed self yes. yet while you're dealing with brokenness and yes. that place that hasn't yet healed and there, there's four stages of healing i don't have time to tell you all that talk about but it the, but the last the final stage of healing is maturation they don't understand that there are some places in your life that perhaps oh, 
You have not mastered oh, or that has not fully matured. Oh, and Jesus. although it has not fully matured, yet you have a, a responsibility Thank to you. be and do what Jesus. God has assigned Jesus. you to do. Oh, see, don't start. Don't even start. Don't even start. We, we ain't got to revival yet. Look, if you're not at this revival, shame on you. All right, 705 Rivergate Parkway to Impact Church of Nashville. Amen. Uh, in in Goodisville, Tennessee, it's going to be 7 p.m. nightly. Uh, Pastor Ruby Holland is one of our, she's kicking off our revival, our event. Oh, my God. I believe that God sent her specifically to give this church what it needs to get through this moment. You know, uh, the pandemic did a lot of things, Pastor Ruby, to a lot of people. And I was studying for a message last week and did some research. And it started talking about how many people have started picking up vices, um, alcohol, porn, uh, you know, drug addiction, that some of them for the very first time, right? That some of them who weren't former alcoholics or uh, substance abusers or th things like that, that the stress of the pandemic uh, caused them to seek ways to medicate those issues. And further than that, even uh, believers, right? Christians, uh, Bible-toting people found themselves either trying vices for the first time or going back to things that mm -hmm. God had pulled them out of. And I was ministering a message last week, and I used the verse where the, Jesus was talking about how when a spirit is going out of a man, how it wanders through dry places and finding no place, it returns back home and finding the place empty. And it brought back with them seven other seven. spirits. Absolutely. And the last day of the man was worse than the first. And I started understanding that there are a lot of people who got into things or went back to things during the pandemic mm -hmm. that is now making it more challenging to them to even return back to their love for God, to service, to worship, to passion. And, and some of them using the excuse, well, you know, uh, it's COVID. And then some of them, and I don't pick, I don't buy that because I see them at the mall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> vacation. Yeah, they've had vacations and stuff at the beach, Walmart, right? Walmart. And, and then some of them are using the excuse of technology. Well, I'll watch it uh, on 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 uh, on the internet, right? I don't have to go to church. I don't need to be there. But talk to me about where where you where the necessity, the need for us to gather together at church for even something like this for revival. Two things I want to share. Um, yeah. First of all, um, I believe the two main tools that the enemy is using in this season yeah. is fear and frustration. But we have to realize First wow. Timothy 1 7 says God has not given us the spirit of fear, Thank but you. of power, love, and of a sound mind. Secondly, frustration. And, and, and everybody is frustrated with the fact that we're dealing with things that we cannot change. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to adjust and adapt mm -hmm. to what is some new norms, yeah. uh, wanting to cling to the old norms. And mm -hmm becoming frustrated, but the Bible tells us, and let us not grow weary in well-doing. Yes. So we're in a season, I believe we're in the season of the great falling away. I believe that we're in that season. The church, that again. Become, that again. the church has become desensitized to yeah. What's on God's agenda? We wow. become desensitized to uh, the time and season. Um, I believe that the earth is caught in, in the grips of God's prophetic calendar. Wow. And what I mean by that is wow. God operates in seasons. We, we understand time and we understand season. There are four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. But, but, but then the God has his own calendar and his yeah. own agenda, his own agenda. At that, that defies the laws of physics and gravity. Mm -hmm. And because the enemy has lulled the church to sleep mm -hmm. and because we become desensitized, mm -hmm. we need to pray for a spirit of discernment yes. so that we can know what's next on God's yes. agenda. And yes. I believe, as I said, I believe that we're caught in the grips of God's prophetic calendar. We need the spirit of the sons of Issachar so that we oh may know God. the seasons oh of the time. And I believe that we're in the season of the great falling away. Um, and people that have that have been that, that was born and raised in the church, I all they that. know I is it's they are straying away. They don't, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, and they're using, I'm seeing, you know, 
And they're using hashtags like, well, I am the church, but the Bible says, and I don't want to preach on this, but the uh, on this Zoom, I keep to, I have to remind myself that this is an interview. Yes. But the Bible says to forsake not the assembling of yourself. And so you got to understand that virtual will never replace in person. Absolutely not. Absolutely. Never. I'm grateful for it. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that in this in this pandemic that we 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 had these means to be able to continue yes. to worship and fellowship and gather. But it virtual will never replace so. in person. I don't think so. Never replace. So. You, you know, I, I'm on that same page because before the pandemic, I, I was one of those people also who used technology more as a toy than as a tool. And it was during this period that we really began to see how it can really be a great tool Absolutely. and not just a toy to connect and send pictures and, and have friends and all that kind of deal, right? We Most of us wouldn't have survived without the technology. But I think that it's a great evangelist, but not so much a good pastor. Absolutely. Like, that there is something that you miss from being in the physical uh, presence. And I'm not taking away from those who are still closed and who can't have those kind of things. I know that there's still churches in country who are still closed and have not opened up as a result of pandemic. However, I do think that since the quarantine is over and people are making all those provisions to be safe, that there is something, for example, our ability to serve, right? Yeah. Serve our community, wow. uh, the fellowship, right? The strength that comes from being in the room together, the uh, iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpening iron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're better together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And where there's yeah. unity, there's <laughs> where there's unity, there he commands the yeah. All those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they can't be duplicated. It's something about being there in person. You know, it's almost like like listening to your favorite artist. You can play it on a CD or something like that or MP3, but it's not like being in the room. Absolutely. Right? There's something Absolutely. to the energy. You experience it live. Yes. yes. In yes. high yes. definition. Yes. <laughs> I'm also concerned too about this. Now, I don't mean to belabor this point, but um, what I'm seeing in our church is a lot of uh, unchurched and people who were looking for some place to worship uh, come in, right? So once we open the doors, we've been open since by last January. Um, some of the some of the existing members are a little slower to come back, but what I'm seeing is an influx of people who needed some place to go, who needed salvation, deliverance those kind of people and my my secret prayer is lord don't let these people walk in and we're not there to serve them uh -huh. i went to a restaurant the other day or a couple weeks ago and they had a line outside the door and we couldn't figure out why because when you looked in there were plenty of empty tables empty seats and everything you could sit no anywhere servers. and yet there was no service and the manager was trying to apologize i'm sorry we can't serve you because we don't have waiters to serve you and I thought, oh, my God, I would hate for the church to be in a position where souls are coming in and we're not there to minister to them. Can you, can you speak to that, Pastor? It, you know, it's it's ironic that that this question would come up because this is something that the Lord has been dealing with me in the last week or two. Wow. Uh, in my private prayer time, I do. Uh, I, I'm awake every morning at 3 a.m., regardless of what hour I go to bed. Wow. 3 a.m. is my prayer time. And one of the things that the Lord dropped in my spirit in my prayer time, he says to me, he says, Ruby, the church is on the verge of losing its ability to be great because nobody wants to serve. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we oh must God. understand that the greatest of all is the servant Serving. of all. And so it, it's, it's so imperative that we that know the way, that we, that we, that, that those of us who, who's the light uh, it's so important that we are in place and we must understand uh, that when Christ left, he left the church in good hands. Yes. Everything they needed to know in ministry, he had taught them. Yes. They knew how to feed the hungry. Yes. They, they knew how to care for the sick. Yes. They knew how to care for those that were mentally yes. challenged and uh, that suffered from neurological problems uh, by dealing with the man's son who was in a tomb. So when Jesus is on the coast uh, of Galilee getting ready to ascend, mm -hmm. he left the church in good hands because mm -hmm. he knew everything they needed to know. He had taught them. He had demonstrated them. Yes. He had 
He did it so that yes. it, it was hands on training. Yes. And so what we have to understand uh, is that it is our responsibility to train the next generation so that when we're no longer on the scene, we know and have that assurance that we have left the church in good hands. <laughs> oh, and I think it's very important that that's 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 the motivation behind doing this revival. You know, we don't do revivals much anymore. If you Absolutely. Things, it's, it's kind of old school. But but the Lord really impressed it upon me that we need to do this in this season. We and, and I don't question him. He's calling for it. We decide to do it. All right. Uh, the Impact Church of Nashville, 705 Rivergate Parkway, Goodlessville, Tennessee. Listen, I, I already told the saints, this this might not be one you want to dress up for. You might want to just come with your tennis shoes, <laughs> sweatsuit on, your jeans, right? You're right, because this is going to be uh, a shift. This is going to be an impactful moment. I told, I warned some of them, you, you might need to get you a designated driver because you're going to be drunk and all. Because they in the field. You're going to be drunk. You're going to inebriate. You're going to get a designated driver to get you home, call you an Uber, right, to get home because it's going to be that kind of anointing. I'm challenging our church not to show up with an empty car, right? If you show up at church, make sure you fill up your car because I want everybody you can to be uh, uh, impacted by this. I'm believing people to get saved. I'm believing people to get filled with the Holy Ghost, to be Yo. healed, to be yes. really delivered. See, because a lot of people are not really delivered. They're just more discreet. Absolutely. That's what I believe. It's Absolutely. not that they're really delivered. They just gotten better at hiding. Yeah, I'm going to say that for the people in the back. You ain't yeah. kidding us, all right? You, you acting like you got it, but you really don't. And this is the time discreet. when we can you're not delivered. Mask, take off the, you know, all that stuff and let God really, really do something in our lives. Then we're going to turn, we're going to gather everybody up through the week. And then Sunday morning, we're going to do uh, a baptismal service for all those candidates who've given their lives to Jesus and backsliders and everybody just need to get baptized in Jesus' name. Hey, that's what I'm saying. But, yeah, so this is not going to be come, let's be cute. This is going to come, let's get free. <laughs> let's get free for let's real. Converted. Let's not cute. Let's get converted. Let's get that's yeah. why I had to call you because I knew you got the gift. <laughs> I am so grateful for what God is doing. And I just want to say this, Pastor Faison, yeah. this is not going to be just an experience. Amen. This is going to be impactful. There was a movie uh, and it was called Sudden Impact. Uh, mm -hmm. This is going to be the kind of uh, impact where you will never, ever be the same. The kind Thank of Lord. change Thank that Lord. the Apostle Paul speaks of when Thank he says, Lord. if any man be in Christ, yeah. he is a new creature. Yeah. You never see a butterfly going back to being a cocoon. Ooh. And so this is like you are changed oh, forever. Come now, on, you now. never see a butterfly going back to be a caterpillar. <laughs> this is the kind of change I love it. I love it. where you are forever changed and yes. never ever the same again. That's, oh. what, that's what we're believing God for. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I heard that you, well, you tell me that you were going to be in town uh, a few days before our event. Where are you going to be at, Pastor Ruby? Absolutely. I'm going to be at the Greater Harvest Church of God in Christ right in Nashville, Tennessee. Pastor Eric and First Lady Christina uh, Stevenson. Yes. Ah, so, so Sunday morning. Gonna, so it's going to be impacted by your ministry for the next week. <laughs> You're going to be hitting them both sides of town. I'm, I'm on a sign. <laughs> Well, I'm excited. Listen, all of you in the Nashville area, surrounding area, want you to come on out. I'm gonna, we're going to be there three days. Pastor Ruby's going to be speaking one night only. She's going to be speaking on Wednesday night. So if you want to be impacted by this great woman of God's ministry, you need to make plans to be there. Be in the place. 705 Rivergate Parkway. I'm going to say it again. Goodlessville, Tennessee. 7 p.m. nightly. Amen. You can be there. You can be impacted. And I'm just believing God to do some amazing things at this ministry. We have worship leaders that are coming in that are going to be helping to set the atmosphere uh, for this event. We're not going to have a whole lot of preliminary. We're just going straight from the worship to the word. So it's not going to be a whole lot of high signing and a whole lot of anything because we want to get down to it and let the word of God flow through uh, the messenger of God. Pastor, I'm, I'm going to close out because I know you have things you need to do. This, th you said it before, you touched on it, and I believe you, and I just want to go back to it. This, this is a moment where God is wanting to speak to us prophetically, that there's something God is trying to say to the church and to the world. What, what do you feel like God is trying to say to us, uh, even through this meeting? What do you think God is trying to tell us? 
we, we must understand that change is never easy, but always necessary because anything that ceases to change ceases to exist. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I hear all the time is I can't wait until things go back to normal. Uh, we, we have to understand that, that it will never, ever be the same. Uh, the only thing that is immutable, unchangeable is God. He's the same. And so we have to be adjustable and adaptable. Um, change is coming. And the worst thing that we can do is not be prepared for it. So in this season, we must embrace change and be flexible, be adaptable, be adjustable so that we can effectively impact the lives of God's people. Amen. Amen. And I'm certainly looking forward to being impacted by your ministry and uh, our, ch our, our church being blessed by the, the, the tremendous deposit that you're going to. I, I'm believing that we'll never will never be the same after this event. Will okay. never be the same after this this revival. This is this is not just um, a normal meeting. This this is something that God has called us to, and I'm believing that this is going to be that kind of thing that you'll be able to go back to your calendar and say that was the day. Absolutely, it's God yeah. ordained. Yeah, it's, it's God ordained. And it's not ironic that you say this is a revival because yeah. this is what the people need to yes. revive something. I'm a nurse by profession, but uh -huh. to Provide something we uh -huh. it has to be resuscitated which means that and I'm, we're not going to get into that but listen revival and you can come not expecting to to have an experience but yes. to but to have a sudden impact on your life will never be the same my god my god see i'm already stirred revival's already started and i'm just so glad that you have been chosen to be a part of this event listen i want you to make plans to be there Thank you, Pastor Ruby, for taking the time out of your schedule to meet with us and talk with us. I love you for that. And I'm looking forward to you uh, impacting our city with your ministry, okay? All Absolutely. right, be blessed, woman of God. Be blessed, be blessed. Blessings upon blessings upon you. Amen? Amen. All right, bless you.